Bernie Sanders went on Face the Nation and he absolutely positively clobbered them with policy substance. This clip, I think, is why Bernie Sanders routinely ranks as the most popular politician in the country. It's exactly what he does here that people like so much. Take a look. Well, one of the foreign policy issues you do talk about in your book is uh, your call for uh, pulling back any kind of U.S. support for the Saudi-led war in Yemen. Uh, there is a resolution you have backed, along with Republican Mike Lee. Do you see, given the scrutiny in the wake of the killing of, of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi, new support for this bill? I do. Uh, when we brought this up, I think it was in March... Uh, we ended up with 44 uh, votes, only five Republicans. Uh, I think we now have a chance to get a majority of the United States Senate. Uh, I think people are looking at the horrific humanitarian disaster now taking place in Yemen. There was a recent report that over the last number of years, some 75,000 children have died of starvation. This is a country dealing with cholera. cholera a country dealing with a terrible level of famine. So you got that issue. You got the issue that this war was never authorized by the United States Congress in violation of our Constitution. And you got the Khashoggi uh, incident, which says that we have a Saudi government led by a despotic ruler who killed a political opponent in cold blood. Add that all together. Uh, I think the American people in Congress are now saying, let us end the support our support uh, for the uh, Saudi-led war uh, in Yemen. You are calling for Democrats who are now going to be in the majority in the House to launch a kind of new contract uh, with America. And some of the things you put out there, you're saying Democrats should call for raising the minimum wage, make public universities tuition-free, expand Social Security, a number of other things. Is this a legislative agenda or a platform for a presidential run for you? <laughs> It's a legislative agenda, Margaret. You know, it's interesting. You, you pick up on, on what I wrote uh, in a Washington Post op-ed, and that is back in 1994, Newt Gingrich, who I disagree with on everything, really had a bold right-wing agenda. And I think we should learn from that. This is what the American people want, and we should do it. They want to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, which I think is 15 bucks an hour. They want pay equity for women. Poll after poll shows that the American people understand that our current dysfunctional health care system needs fundamental change. And that means Medicare for all, single payer system. The American people understand that in a highly competitive global economy, uh, we have got to make public colleges and universities tuition free. We have got to deal with climate change, as we just discussed. We have got to deal with a broken criminal justice system, with immigration reform. All of these issues are, in fact, what the American people want. And the question is whether Congress has the guts to stand up to the big money interests who want more tax breaks for the rich, who want to cut Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid, or we stand up for the shrinking middle class and we demand a government that represents all of us and legislation which represents the working families uh, of this country. This dude wakes up in the morning, and as he's brushing his teeth, he's probably talking to himself about policy. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was a master class. The clip was a little over three minutes. And in a short three-minute clip, here's what we got. End the war in Yemen. Uh, let's pass a living wage, pay equity, Medicare for all, free college, climate change. Uh, let's do legislation like a Green New Deal to combat climate change. Uh, end the drug war and do criminal justice reform, immigration reform, uh, calling out the corruption in Washington, D.C., uh, talking against the disastrous tax cuts for the ultra-wealthy that the Trump administration just did, with 83% of the benefits going to the top 1%. Um, and he spoke about how we need to rebuild the middle class and the working class. That's 11 issues that he touched on in a, a clip that was a little over three minutes. This is why Bernie Sanders is the most liked politician in the U.S. And for the record, it's not even close. Nobody's even close to him. He, he surpasses everybody by a gigantic margin. So when you have other politicians, what do they do?
let's be honest, most other politicians, whether they're on the right or the left, they love to speak in bullshit politician phrases. And not to pick on Hillary, because, you know, hopefully her day is long dead and gone and she isn't going to run in 2020, although she's apparently an insider says she is going to run in 2020. But when you look at somebody like Hillary, she had a just a a bucket full of platitudes and cliches to throw at you. Stronger together, break down the barriers, uh, America is already great, she said stuff like that. It's like, what are you saying? What do you actually believe in? Well, I don't have any questions about what Bernie believes in because he says it and he's straight to the point with it. There's no fluff words. There's no flowery nonsense. This is a dude who cares about every single thing he just laid out. And that's why people love him. Listen, there are people way to the left of Bernie that love him. People who are actual socialists. They say, let's, uh, you know, let's um, have the social ownership of the means of production. There are people who believe that, but then they look at Bernie and they're like, I still like him, even though he's a mild social democrat. There are people to Bernie's right who look at him and they go, I like him. You know, because he's a guy who they think, oh, he's being honest, number one. And I definitely think he's going to look out for me and my family and protect our jobs. Even if they have some philosophical disagreements with him, whether it be on abortion or, or you know, whatever other issue they might say, I don't like that. Uh, I'm in favor of small government. Bernie wants big government. You know, they can have disagreements, but people like him. And they like him for this reason. Because all he does is talk about the issues uh, and the policies and how he, he wants to fix the country. And I really think other politicians who are good politicians need to learn from this. Because there's no, like, I think politicians feel like they have to do something extra. Like, I have to somehow stand out and be, like, be my own uh, special snowflake. I don't mean snowflake in this pejorative sense. I mean, be, like, unique. I need to speak to people in a way that's, like, when you had Obama, for example. Obama was a rare politician, kind of like a JFK-like politician, who, like, the way he speaks... Soaring oratory, if I don't say so myself. And people think like, oh, I need to kind of talk like that. All that surface stuff comes down to nothing. Fucking Trump is president right now. Trump. A guy who speaks in sentence fragments and he says the same thing, unbelievable things, tremendous things, over and over. Let me just tell you. I have to tell you. I have to tell you. People are saying that it's, I'm one of the best speakers that they're... So you have a guy who can't put together a full sentence... And sounds like a buffoon because he is one. And he was able to win the presidency. Perhaps style is irrelevant. If we can have, you know, a, a minor, a, a mild-mannered person who ends up winning, who's soft-spoken, you know. Or you can have a guy who's rough around the edges and, and a ranting, uh, lunatic-sounding type person who can get elected. Perhaps there are other factors that go into, the consider, go into consideration here. And I think the connecting tissue is people usually go for whoever they think is more anti-establishment. That's, that's what I think is one of the, the key um, factors of who ends up winning, is as a general rule, in general elections, people go, hmm, who's more, who more hates the way the system functions? And I guess by extension does want to change the way the system functions. Who's more anti-establishment? Who's, who seems more anti-corruption? And with a guy like Bernie... I mean, it's crystal clear that everything he actually believes he's telling you, and he really does despise uh, the leadership of both parties, even though in many instances he's forced to kind of work with them. And I think that all of that is tactical and strategic. I do. I don't think Bernie's some sort of rube who's been duped or he sold out or something. No. He realizes the best way for him to impact change on this country is using the giant infrastructure of one of the two major parties. And so you have to basically try to take over one of those two major parties in order to really implement the reforms that he wants. So he recognizes that, and now it, you get the sense it's his day. It's his time. And uh, it's wonderful to see, man. It really is. And hopefully that's our next president. I think he's going to run, and I think he's going to win. So a lot of things can happen, so you can't be too sure about any of this stuff, but... um. He's certainly the favorite, and the media is going to throw everything they got at him to try to take him down. The corporate Democrats are going to throw everything they got at him to take him down. But I think that he's going to, he can trump the Democratic Party in the same way that the Republican establishment didn't want Trump, and they went to everybody, and then eventually he won anyway. 
They were like, oh, we'll back Jeb. Oh, shit, Jeb's the worst politician ever. Uh, Marco, okay, Marco sucks, and that didn't work either. Fine, we'll take Cruz. Even Cruz couldn't do it. Uh, and But Trump ended up winning. On the Democratic side, I think a similar thing's going to happen. The win could be so overwhelming that he just trumps him, kind of curb stomps him, and marches to victory, and um, it would be a lovely day, wouldn't it? So... We'll see what happens, but I love this clip. I love this clip because it's it's peak Bernie. <laughs> he probably went on the show to talk about one issue. He ended up talking about almost every issue. <laughs> and every word that comes out of his mouth, he's right about. And that says something special. <laughs> 